I'm not going to be a novice in that office. I've been there before. I showed unflinching commitment to my country. I will hit the ground running because I know exactly what to do on the first day that they get there. Sierra Leone is a country rich in natural resources such as diamonds, gold and bauxite. It also has a wonderful climate for agriculture. Unfortunately, these positive points of the country have not always historically been exploited to their full potential for the good of the nation and its people. Over the years, Sierra Leone has suffered social, economic and political disturbances at the hands of corrupt, power-hungry leadership which culminated in a devastating 11-year civil war between 1991 and 2002. This left over 50,000 people dead, thousands maimed and ruined the country's infrastructure. On November 17, 2012, the country will be announcing its next president with hopes of an increasingly better future with the brutal and bloody past left far behind. Julius Madabio who is an ex-president of Sierra Leone, is one of the main presidential candidates campaigning against President Ernest Bayer Koroma. Julius Madabio also played a crucial part in the two coups in the country. Can his policies bring about the anticipated change for Sierra Leone? Retired Brigadier General Madi Bio, it's a great pleasure to have you at OTV. Thank you for having me here. You're in London right now under invitation to uh, David Cameron. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm a retired military officer of the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces. I was born in Bond District in a small village called Tihun. I started my schooling there in a small primary school. I proceeded to secondary school in uh, a wonderful government secondary school called the Bo School. And uh, when I finished off uh, at, uh, completed my sixth form, I decided to join the army. So I, my father uh, was a paramount chief. My mother, a very humble, small uh, peasant farmer. What was the reason behind you going into the army? I was very much interested in national service. I wanted to serve my nation. Then the opportunity, uh, provided itself at a juncture. So I entered the military as a cadet officer, and I did that, trained uh, for, from 1986 to 1987, and I completed as a second lieutenant in the armed forces of Sierra Leone. As you can continue in the army ranks, there were some significant events that were happening later on that would link you into politics. Some people out there who are familiar with this would call them coups. Others would look at them as significant historic events in Sierra Leone that would pave the platform to democracy. In your words, would you give us a lowdown on this and why you were involved in this? We had a government that had been in power for near for well over 20 years. It was not democratic in nature, it was authoritarian. It later declared uh, a one-party state in which no other political parties were allowed to exist. Human rights were, uh, was not observed. Uh, Freetown, our, our city, was completely dark because there was no electricity. Uh, you had to queue for fuel, you had to queue for food, you had to queue virtually for everything. Uh, I'm not talking about the type of cues you make here. It was because there was scarcity of everything, virtually everything except air that we breathe. Uh, the interference with the judicial processes were, were, were very rampant. Uh, the economy was recklessly managed. A lot of things went wrong and um, it came to a head in 1992. By that time, you could hardly get anything in Sierra Leone in terms of uh, basic uh, essential commodities, and the government had a stranglehold on the people. So uh, it led uh, to the, the emergence of a rebel group called the Revolutionary United Front, and they attack, uh, attacked Sierra Leone. So we had a civil war uh, with rebels fighting to overthrow that same government that, uh, we, that we eventually overthrew. When I entered the military, 
it was with uh, the intention to serve my country. But of course, uh, as officers or as members of the Armed Forces Australian, we will swear that we will serve or defend our nation. And sometimes, actually, you defend your nation, not just against outside forces, but from forces within the country itself. So we decided that it was necessary to get rid of this government. We decided to, to adopt or use the military method because all other democratic means to change a government had failed for over 20 years. And if democratic means could not, and nobody was coming to our aid, we would take the laws into our own hands and free the people of that country. So in fact, it was not a coup that we actually executed completely. We only started it, and it, it was actually the civilians that uh, completed. They came out, and we were running after ministers, and that was the end of that government. One coup is one thing to, to say, but then there was also another. Would you be able to tell us the reason behind the second coup? The second coup, I would say, was meant for us as the military who had intervened as a group to keep our word or our promise to our people. Towards the end of our four years stay, which we had said um, we would be in power, um, it became quite evident that <clears throat> some of our colleagues had started entertaining the idea of wanting to stay around. I wasn't in for that. I thought that was not what we had told the people. Uh, both in public and on paper, and I thought I would not be part of that. So the second time I actually had to be involved in a coup was again to make sure that we returned the country to democracy. Where you're looking to go into power again for a second time. Due to this integrity of the world and what you've done in the past, some people might look at it as a modern time solution to Sierra Leone right now. Tell us a bit about your vision and of the future of what Sierra Leone is now. Well, to give you my vision about Sierra Leone, I think I would uh, want to go back a little, okay. that we have just come out of war, 10 years out of war. Yes. We have uh, ravaged, uh, 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 most of our communities We are completely destroyed. Our economy was battered and we are trying to rebuild all of that. What is most striking in Sierra Leone today is um, uh, the number of uh, youths we have on the streets who are unemployed. And uh, I think that that has informed my decision or my vision very, very seriously. I, my vision for Sierra Leone is a united country that is at peace with itself, itself and also its neighbors and that is able to provide a very conducive and an enabling environment that is caring so that foreign direct investment, which we so much need, yes. can come about in that country. So that uh, the huge numbers of people who are out on the street can have some form of employment and be able to take care of themselves. We should be able to educate our people because human capital is the most important asset and uh, therefore we must upgrade, we must give it the best quality of education and we must make sure that our people are healthy and therefore we should have a sound uh, health care system not only to educate our people but to make sure they are healthy and uh, make sure they are competitive in a globalized world. 15 years is enough time. I've been out of it for a while. I've had uh, to reflect on those things that I think we are correct and those things that I think did that we are not necessarily correct. What we set me apart from the present leadership uh, or president, honest by Chroma, is that first, I'm not going to be a novice in that office. I've been there before. I will hit the ground running because I know exactly what to do on the first day that I get there to make sure that we are able to improve on the, on the conditions of life of our people. We have a lot of natural resources. Uh, we are resource rich as a country, but policy poor. So we are going to put in place the right policies and the necessary um, management environment to make sure that those resources benefit the people of that country. Africa has been looked at as the new West. It's one of the most emerging economies. How would you manage and ensure that 
at all times, the interests of the Africans and the people on the ground have been looked after. Well, that is definitely a function of government. Yeah. We're there to protect our people, to seek their interest. Yeah. That should be paramount. And uh, I'm going to make sure it remains paramount on my agenda. We have to be able to coin agreements that are in the interest of not only the investors, but also the people of our country. And that is where the key is. So you have to make sure that there is a legal framework that protects our people, the interests of our people, so that um, especially the, the fiscal arrangements in those agreements, we, have to, we must, must take care of those.